Today, we reached an inflection point in both the Mueller probe and the legal hunting of President Donald Trump and his most senior aides. Everything just changed. Last night, President Trump went to sleep with a potential pardon in his back pocket for even the most guilty, convicted, humiliated people on his team. Tonight, the president faces a legal nightmare for an incumbent so intent on stifling law enforcement. The first state charges against a former Trump aide as New York prosecutors indict Paul Manafort today on charges that the president cannot pardon. No debate. Legal fact. We're going to get into why that matters because that bombshell completely changes the enormous pressure on Mr. Manafort and the White House's entire calculus and leverage up until today. This bombshell dropped literally minutes after Manafort's team walked out of court sitting on this now seven-year prison sentence that he got. The scene today far harsher than when the news of Manafort's lighter sentence broke last week in Virginia. The D.C. federal judge today adding about three and a half more years to that 47-month sentence that Manafort got last week in Virginia. News that broke during our show. All right, I've just been told that Paul Manafort has received 47 months in prison from this judge Whoa. in Virginia. 47 months. An ex a fairly light sentence as, as compared to the guidelines of up to 24 years. Judge Amy Berman Jackson has sentenced him to an additional three and a half years. So he'll get out of prison and run these roughly 75 or 76 years old. Paul Manafort, with today's news set for incarceration until 75 or 76 on just the federal charges. And let me explain exactly what that means. This is important as you hear everyone debate what Bob Mueller's done or whether he's close to ending. Today, that's the harshest sentence of anyone in the Mueller probe thus far. In fact, it is close to the longest sentence for anyone in any special prosecutor probe, which was about eight years in all of Watergate. Now, Paul Manafort's lawyers know this is a huge setback for their client, who has actually been trying to downplay his own guilt and make these no-collusion arguments aimed at the White House for a federal presidential pardon. That is the context for something else you need to see. The bizarre scene playing out as Manafort's lawyer stepped out today to address the public and protesters and try to make a misleading claim that he argued the court's ruling on Manafort's prison time also made some sort of ruling on Russian collusion. The courts did not do that since these weren't even collusion cases. And Manafort's lawyer found himself sort of fact check and shouted down by protesters. For anyone who was in the courtroom today, what I'm about to say will not be a surprise. Um, Judge Jackson uh, conceded that there was absolutely no evidence of any Russian collusion in this case. So that Can makes two courts. Two courts I ruled no evidence Traitor. of any collusion Liar. with any Russians. That's not what she said they chanted about Judge Jackson. The protesters were right. The judge actually rebuked Manafort's team for their collusion non sequitur, her words, and we have more on that later tonight. But the top headline here was this judge roasting Paul Manafort for his now confessed crimes, rebuking the number of lies, the amount of fraud, the extraordinary amount of money that she detailed was at stake in his felonies. And she justified this medium to harsh sentence, partly because she said Manafort never even accepted responsibility for this offense, ultimately backing away from the facts. So as a legal matter, all of that would have made this today the most devastating single day in the Mueller probe thus far. The highest jail sentence, the most direct rebuke of a senior Trump official on the record, especially since Jackson was so much tougher on Manafort than that federal judge we heard from last week in Virginia. But for reasons that I am about to explain to you right now, this worst day ever already for the Mueller probe, well, it got much, much worse with something you rarely see, a new separate pardon-proof indictment of Paul Manafort on these other charges by the top prosecutor in New York. You can't make up how much is happening right now legally. 16 new counts right here in this mortgage fraud case. This changes everything. The very existence of these state charges, which is new tonight, reduce any motivation for President Trump to try to rush to pardon Manafort on the federal crimes if he could end up sitting in a different jail for other crimes that, again, Trump cannot pardon. 
And as this show and my colleague Rachel Maddow and many legal experts have noted for some time, Manafort's team had been using their final filings, their final argument in this case to basically pitch a federal pardon. These state charges undercut everything they've been trying to do. So if these charges stick, that itself could be checkmate for Manafort's strategy. And to the extent Trump is going along with it, whatever Trump hopes to get out of that, which may be why Mr. Manafort's lawyer, who has been so quick to make outlandish and false claims, I want to show you this tonight. He couldn't even muster any response to the largest question haunting Trump world right now. How do you counter prosecutors in a jurisdiction you don't control where your pardons don't apply? Kevin, do you have any, do you have any comment on the indictment in New York? No comment. Not yet, anyway. I'm about to get an update on all of this, the breaking story out of Washington with NBC's Julia Ainsley reporting to, for us live outside of the Justice Department, a busy building to be sure. But we begin with David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones, who has tracked this Manafort case from its very inception, and Ali Mistal, executive editor of Above the Law and a contributor to The Nation. Uh, David, mm -hmm. what's bigger, this Watergate-level historic jail sentence for Paul Manafort or him getting hit? the same day with these pardon-proof charges. It's a dessert topping and a floor wax. I mean, they're both really gigantic stories. In any era other than the Trump era, this story would be around for weeks, and, you know, it would just be tremendous. I'm afraid that within a day or two, we'll move on to 23 other scandals. But you have the guy who ran the campaign for the president of the United States going to jail. And, you know, seven years, some people th think is a light sentence. It, it, maybe it is, uh, given the gravity of the crimes. It's still a long time. He turned 70 on April 1st. In just a couple of weeks, he's looking at spending, if he serves out the full term here, a tenth of his life behind bars. That's a big hmm. deal, and it does reflect upon Trump and the campaign, and we can talk about the collusion aspect later, as, as you want to do. We're going to get to collusion. Let yes. me stay with me, Ellie. Walk us through what it means that these independent New York prosecutors are on the case starting today. Yeah, it means, as you put it in your open, it's pardon proof now, right? Like what, once Cy Vance, which is the who is the Manhattan DA, gets on the case, as you said, if these charges stick, that means any jail time that he has to serve because of these charges are not subject to a presidential pardon. It is unlikely, and one of the one of the things in the charges here, uh, Manafort's accused of various kind of, uh, of real estate fraud that in, inspired jacking up the rents in New York City. You put Manafort in front of a New York jury and accuse him of jacking up rents, he's going to go away for a long time. And based on your knowledge here, again, people can like or dislike what these two federal judges did. We see disparities there. Yes. But based on your knowledge of this, you're here at this table in New York. How are judges in New York going to deal with Mr. Manafort in, in your understanding? Look, I also look. I also wanted Judge Amy Berman Jackson to be more like Judge Sam Jackson, right? I wanted a full-on, yes, he deserved to die, and I hope he burns in hell. That's not what she's about. That's not what she did. She made a reasonable sentence. I think judges in New York are going to be reasonable about this case. They're not going to prejudge. They're not going to put their thumb on the scale. Can you look at years? I think he's absolutely looking at years. You know, because so we're talking, let me just slow this down. We're talking seven years plus here on the federal sentence. Right. And if that is not pardoned or interceded with, that sits. And then you're saying potentially years for, a, for someone in the, who's going to be in their 70s in New York if convicted. With no reason to run the sentences concurrently. One of the things that happened with the Jackson and Ellis is that part of the sentences run concurrently. There's no reason to do it concurrently with the state charges because the state charges arise from different criminal acts. And, yeah, and David, I, I, David I, hold on, David. Yeah, okay. I want to play for everyone and you. Yeah. The president asked about this, and I want to be very clear. Uh, as we take in what I think is an inflection point, game-changing mm -hmm. night in the Mueller probe. This is a president who is highly sophisticated about how to deal with criminal investigations. This is a president yes. who was, had his eye on SDNY, the federal prosecutors in New York, during his transition for reasons that remain suspicious, as we've documented on this show. Here he was, yeah. based on what we know, pretending not to understand what we believe he does understand about how bad this news is on Manafort with pardon-proof charges today. Take a look, David. What about the second set of charges? I don't know about state Are they going after him for state taxes? No, they're going after him in New York State. He faced federal charges, and he's been sentenced on federal charges right after the sentencing took place here uh, in Washington, D.C. 
the uh, Manhattan District Attorney filed state charges against him, which would seem to be a way to get around the effect of any pardon that might be done. I don't know anything about it. I haven't heard that. I'll take a look at it. David. Now, I still think there is a value to a Trump pardon with Manafort. I don't know how many years he may end up with if convicted of these new charges in New York uh, City. But even so, if he's to get five years, I'm just pulling this number out of the hat, you know, getting rid of the seven years in the federal charges, there's a big difference when you're 70 looking at five years or 12 years. Yeah, so sure. I, still, I, I, don't, right? I don't disagree so, with you, so, so David. If we're looking David, at Man I don't I'm disagree saying, with you. Hold on. Yeah. But the point tonight, before you go deep yep. in the weeds, <laughs> is that there is no good rationale yep. for Donald Trump, who has proven to be quite wily about dealing with law enforcement, to rush yep. out a federal pardon now. I mean, don't you think that is less likely sooner uh, because of this hedge? Well, perhaps, but at the same time, if Manafort is still hoping to keep quiet and not tell the truth, as the judge accused him of doing in the, in the federal case, he still has an incentive to maybe stick to that position, so whether he gets it now or a year from now or two years from now, to get rid of that federal time you know, may mean a lot to him, particularly if he ends up getting some New York State time. Well, or it may mean less. In other words, we're, we're now into it depends yep. on the future. But if he gets hit yes. with five plus years in New York, it's a whole different ball game, And that's why this is, is such a fascinating turn. Both yep. of you stay with me. As promised, I bring in NBC's Julia Ainsley, who's been reporting from the Justice Department. Let's look at how this fits in to the building behind you. People sometimes forget. For all of his independence, Bob Mueller works for the Justice Department. He reports into what is now uh, the Trump Attorney General Bill Barr. And this would look like a big Mueller victory here, Julia. We're going to put it on the screen for your analysis. Uh, this case started with Papadopoulos getting a couple weeks. Other people we don't even think about, Van der Zwan Pinedo. Cohen was handed off three years in New York. The seven and a half years for Manafort here is by far the most significant thing Mueller has done at a time that we still await sentencing for Gates and Flynn. Julia, how big of a victory is this for Bob Mueller? Absolutely. There were two big victories today. First, the Manafort sentence and then the news from the Manhattan DA, because what this does is it sends a message to other defendants in this case, other people who Mueller has indicted or people who he may indict in the future that says you are not pardon proof. And it is obvious that these judges see these charges that the special counsel is bringing very seriously. One person I think would probably be paying particularly close attention today is Roger Stone, because we know his defense team will go in front of this same judge tomorrow for a status conference, and we may hear whether or not he's in violation of his gag order. And then, of course, you have Rick Gates coming up, where his defense will show how much he has cooperated, unlike Paul Manafort. It shows that when you make decisions like Paul Manafort, which from the outside seems pretty irrational, unless you think that he's gunning for a pardon, it shows if you go down the track of Manafort and not someone like Rick Gates who's cooperating or someone like Michael Flynn, things can get harder because there are places where the president cannot reach. And that's what the judge made very clear today. She said in the court, the facts still matter. Yeah. Could be a kind of an allusion to what's going on in politics today. People might not trust what they're hearing from their federal government, hmm. but inside her courtroom, the facts still matter. And in other words, that, that someone who's trying to manipulate this, someone like Manafort is trying to tamper with witnesses, that can't happen in her courtroom. And then the further you take this outside of Mueller, as it goes to places like the Southern District of New York, as it goes to the state level, that is even more proof from the intervention of the of the executive branch of the White House right. of the president trying to get involved. And so Julia put that against the backdrop of the endless intrigue around when and if Bob Mueller might be close to done uh, because a casual observer here would say seems like a lot still going on some things ending some things beginning and of course while there's no reporting that suggests uh, Cy Vance and Bob Mueller publicly have an alliance here uh, Cy Vance, the New York DA, did what is the normal lawful approach, which is to defer to the feds until the right point, which was today. They finished the sentencing and then pick up the mantle. And we know, Julia, uh, Mr. Vance, who's here on screen, who I think viewers are going to be hearing a lot more about as he pursues this case. Uh, we do know that Mueller's other plea agreements, like many DOJ agreements, do hold out the prospect of cooperating with other 
authorities, which could include uh, the local DA. So how does that all stack up against what you're seeing Mueller up to right now? We haven't gotten any reporting that has waved us off of the idea that this will be concluding within the coming weeks or coming months. Uh, but I will say that those cooperating witnesses are key here. When you look at what information they need, it could be that more people would come forward and cooperate, whether that's with Mueller himself or with the Southern District or with the Manhattan DA. But Mueller is going to have to answer the question before he submits this report, is any of that cooperation crucial to answering the question that he was laid out and his original task, which is, did the Trump campaign cooperate with Russia to meddle in the 2016 election? So further cooperation could bring in new people. It can go in different places. Of course, if we're talking about Trump himself being out of legal trouble and we're talking about state charges, you have to, of course, look at probes into the Trump organization. Not, this Mueller report won't mean that the president or people who work around him are out of the legal hot water, so to speak. But it's just a matter of Mueller being able to answer that question if, if any more cooperation mm -hmm. could steer him in a different direction. And if not, then yes, we, we could be seeing that wrap soon. And again, that would be delivered right here to the Department of Justice. Right, and then you, it'll be up to the attorney general what pieces he shares with right, Congress you, and then with us. Right where you are, where I'm sure you'll be running out to tell us. Uh, my thanks to Julia Ainsley for her reporting. Uh, David Korn stays with me for the collusion piece of this later. Ellie Mistal in New York, you get the last word on what we're going to see for people who are watching this and saying, wow, today's the first time someone outside of Washington has indicted a Trump official. Wow. There's no pardon power. Wow. All those discussions of Trump's potential obstruction, not proven by the way he intercedes with his aides, Flynn, Comey, McCabe, off the table. He could call Cy Vance all he wants and won't get a call back. I'll, I'll use my last word like Cohen uh, used some of his words, right? If you continue to obstruct and lie for the president, people will come for you. That's what's going to happen now. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody in the Trump organization needs to understand that at this point in their lives and careers, telling the truth is probably the right thing to do. Well put uh, right here in New York, Ellie Mistal. Thank you, Thank you, as always, for being a part of our special coverage. I wanted to hear your New York perspective <laughs> on the law tonight. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.